got your Bibles, turn on to the Psalms, 37th chapter. It's ordered by God. 
A lot of pressure, but if God, if God be for you, who can be against you? I'm telling you that, but you got to say, God is for me. Who is against me? God is for me. Yeah. Second chapter of St. John. First verse. And it says, On the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And here's the mother of Jesus. How many know the story about Mary? She had never been touched by a gentleman. And the Holy Ghost overshadowed shadowed her, and, and she brought forth a son. Never been touched by a man. So she knew the miracle working power of God. She knew the voice of God. Jesus told them, my sheep will know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. She had done heard the Holy Ghost speak to her and said, you shall bring forth a child. And his son shall be called Emmanuel. His son shall be called Jesus. He's going to be given a name that's above every name. That every knee shall bow and that every tongue shall confess. She already knew who this man was. Because Jesus told him, said, I come to do my, the, I'm about my father's business. And me and my father are one. So Mary, Mary already knew the power of God. She already knew the voice of God. Because she brought forth the son. And his name was called Jesus. And the mother of Jesus was there. Second verse. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, They have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servant, Whosoever he said unto, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there was a set and there was set three W L I. And there were set three six water pots of stone after the manner of pure bank of the Jews, containing two or three farkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And when they filled them up to the brim, and he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not where, which it was, but the servants which drew it out the water knew, the governor called of the feast called the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Look over there, the fifth verse. It says, His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. How many of we come to church every Sunday and we sit here every Sunday and half the people lays out just every other Sunday? How many of it ain't pleasing to God? He wants you to go to church and he wants you to be faithful. He's done told us in the word, Whatsoever he said, Mary said, Whatsoever he said, do it. If you sat here today and God tells you to pray for somebody and you just sat there, heaven knows nothing's going to happen. Oh, man. But Mary already knew the power of his voice. Yeah. Because it, that voice brought forth a son. And somebody tell me that son's name. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for Mary, heeding to the word of God, I know you and I wouldn't even be saved today. But because the one woman did what the Holy Ghost told her to do, how many knows you and I have redemption for our sin? Yes. Whatsoever God tells you to do, how many knows we need to do it? Amen. And you may say to yourself, I've been a failure all my life. The order of the steps of a good man, meaning and a woman too, are ordered by God. Yes. And you may look at somebody else who can preach better than you. You can look at somebody else who can sing better than you. And they've been up front all your life. But my Bible tells me, those which are first shall be last. And those which are last shall be first. And if I start obeying God, how many of those the best is waiting for last? Amen. But how many ever sat there and God told you to pray for somebody? And you just sat there. My daddy always told me, 
Nothing from nothing leaves what? Nothing. And yet we grow to complain, church is so dead, nothing happens anymore. I'm doing my part. I may not be praying like I should, but God called me to preach, and that's my part. If God's telling you to pray for somebody, how many knows you need to do it? You want church to get better and more exciting? And it don't wait on your neighbor to do it. Don't do what does set the Lord. He tells you to do something, how many knows you need to do it? Mary already knew the power of God. She already knew that he was real. Even though that was her son, she knew he was a miracle working man. Amen. And she knew this was the first miracle that Jesus ever did. Mary never seen him do a miracle before this day. And this was the first miracle. But that first miracle led to many more. It led to opening the blinded eyes. The little widow woman, when she was going down the, in the funeral procession, Jesus was moved with compassion. And he stopped the funeral procession. He said, what's wrong with you, woman? This is my only son, and he's dead. He said, arise, and the son came forth. It was just the beginning. Jesus turned the water into wine. Yeah. But Mary knew the secret. Whatever he said, do. Do it. That's why our church is so dead. I'm used to people shouting, dancing. I've seen them run the aisle, run the benches. Now we just come to church out of routine. I know God ain't quit speaking to people. I'm tired of the same old same old. I'm preaching to myself this morning. I need to pray more. I need to study more. I need to do my part. But whatever God tells you to do, how many know we need to do it? We want our church to grow. I'm not going to preach long this morning. We need to do it. If somebody's got the gift of miracle, we need to use it. If somebody's got the gift of healing, we need to start using it. If somebody's got, I, I, I would like for somebody to have the, I know there's some people here that does have the gift of prophecy. I've heard them use it in the past. But something done dried up in them. But if you want our church to grow, how many knows we got to make it grow? The Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. You know, I worked all week long out here at the church. How many know to see anything different about that? I worked all week long. I didn't get paid. And I'm not going to get paid. That's a sacrifice for me. But if God tells me to do something in church, I would be a whole lot better off to obey Him than to work free for 40 hours on this building. Because obedience is greater than sacrifice. And it don't matter what kind of mistakes you have made in your life, you've got to trust that the steps of a good man is ordered by God. And when you sit there and God tells you to do something, well, I cussed the cat this morning. You ain't supposed to be. But how many know that's something the devil uses on you to get you to feel not worthy? And when he gets you to feel not worthy, how many know that to get you to not obey God? And then when you don't obey God, we come to church and sit here the same old routine over and over. And that's where we fail. I know God's been speaking to people to obey Him. Has God ever told you anybody to pray for somebody? Have you ever said that? The devil ain't going to go tell you to pray for somebody that's sick because he don't want them well. You can have the gift of healing in your hand and somebody sitting here dying with the flu and, you, and God speak to you to go pray for them. You know what you'll say? I don't know about God or not. You better know it's God. Because the devil ain't going to go tell you to pray for somebody that's sick. Because he don't want them well. He wants them right there where he's got them. Oh, Depressed, sick and tired, don't like nobody, like Brother Drone said, frowning all the time. But my Bible tells me to sing a new song. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for me to, I've been accused of living in Disney World before, smiling all the time. 
But I got to get back to that place. I got to get to where you can't tell whether I'm down and out. I got to get to the place where you can't tell something to bother me or not. I got to have the joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord's my strength. I got to find that joy like I used to have. I got to get my peace back like I used to have. And the devil can't take my salvation. But I'm where I'm at today because God ordered my step. I may be slack before in concerning things I need to do, but I've always been a child of the King. I've always served God. I've always been a good man. And the things that, that's faced me in my life, how many knows my Bible tells me the steps are ordered by God. I may not understand why things has went the way they have in my life. And you may not understand why things has went the way they have in your life. But we just got to trust God that we're in his plan. Amen. And it's quiet in here this morning. But Mary told him, said, whatever he saith unto you to do, do. Amen. And if the people hadn't went and got the water pots filled, they wouldn't have had wine for the feast. Right. And Jesus wouldn't have got to done his first miracle. He wouldn't have got to do his first miracle if they had obeyed what he told them to do. See, and I'm, I'm not going to preach long, but Jesus turned the water into wine. But he had to have something to work with. He had to have the water. And where did the water come from? His disciples. And where did the miracle come from? Him. If we provide Jesus with something to work with, how many knows he'll perform the miracle? If we provide him with just a wheeling vessel, how many knows he'll perform the work? I heard Brother Shambach preach a message one time. said this preacher, God told him to call revival in this big city. And he told him, he said, announce that I'm going to raise the dead. He said, God, I can't do that. He said, that's, that's scary. He said, do it. He said, he rented this big auditorium. And he said he announced on the radio, he announced in any, every way he could that God was going to raise the dead. And he said he was in his room getting ready before each service. And he would peek out the door and see if they'd bring a body in there. And sure enough, after a few nights of revival, here come a casket coming down the aisle. He said he started his knees started knocking. He said he started getting real nervous, Brother Drone. And he said he kept peeking out the door. And that spirit of fear kept building up on him. And God told him, he said, I said I would raise the dead. Go do it. He said he went out there and he raised that body up. And he said, in the name of Jesus, come alive. Let him go and he fell back down. He said he got that much more nervous. God said, do it again. He said he spoke to him in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Fell back down. How many would panic at that moment? But he said, I said, speak to it again. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I command the life to come in this body. And said his eyes started beating together. How many of if God tells you something, it's coming to pass. And if he hadn't announced that, if he hadn't done it, how many of God couldn't have raised the dead? But when God raised that one man from the dead, how many of thousands of souls were saved in that revival? Just because one person was obedient to what God told him to do. I want to be that one person. If he tells me to go tie a bucket on the roof, how many knows I want to do it? If he, how many knows, if he tells me to dance down the aisles, I want to do it. You see on TV all, all the time people dancing and praising and in football games, everybody gets loud. But when we come to church, we sit here dead as a hammer. It's dead as a knot on a log, as my dad said. David danced before God with all his mind. He didn't say he was in the spirit. How many knows he was just giving God some praise? I want to give God some praise. If I knew how to dance, I would dance. I would give God that praise. Sometimes I feel it in my feet. Sometimes I feel it in my hand. I just don't know what to do. It makes me mad when I see somebody dance to you and they do it. Because I can't do it. But how many of us, we need, if we, we need to start obeying God. We need to start offering God a sacrifice of prayer. We need to get excited about serving God. 
Because I don't care. The Bible says all these earthly things are passed away. Naked I came in, naked I shall leave. I will not gain nothing by having money, but I will gain heaven if he's got my soul. I, I need to start getting excited about who I'm serving. This, like Brother Grohl's song, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And because of my failures and my faults, and, and I fell flat on my face many times, but he didn't cast me out. Right. He's still with me because my steps are ordered by God. How many of us we need to start to go man God? Right. How many love the Lord this morning? I, I wish everybody was shouting this morning. I wish we I wish things were better, but you know what? I was holding on to what God said. I put a lot of work in this church. And the enemy constantly talking to my ear, give it up. You ain't doing no good. Has the devil ever talk to you? I'll be over here working. I work all week this week. And I go home at night. What, what are you doing that for? What's the use in it? As good as this church once was, how many knows he's going to save the best for last? Amen. I don't see how it's going to happen. I don't see in my own eyes how it's going to be changed. But he said, if I just hold on, he's going to change. You know, I've, I've studied this morning. The Bible says, I've heard so many people say, well, I just don't fear God, feel, feel God anymore. How many's ever heard that? If God don't move for me, I'm just going to quit. If I don't start feeling his presence, I'm going to quit. How many's ever heard that? Yeah. But I was reading this morning, the Bible said, it don't say he draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to him. It says for me to draw nigh to him, and he would draw nigh to me. By me drawing nine, he's going to start speaking to me. Amen. And when he speaks to me to get some water, put the pot, how many knows God can change that water to wine? Amen. God's got to have something to operate with. Amen. And it ain't a bad spirit either. <coughs> you got to have joy. You got to have happiness. And whatsoever he said to do, what do we need to do, church? Yeah. Do it. Even if it sounds stupid, guess what we need to do? Yeah. Do it. I've seen him rolling. Have you ever seen him rolling on the floor? Just Brother Peyton, you remember him preaching? He was an older gentleman. He was about five foot tall. And he had one of these deep voices. And he'd get so excited. He said, young people are dead. Just do something. Take a shoe off. Throw it at somebody. Just do something. <laughs> he would get so excited. How many of whatever he said to do, do. I know it's with a shout message this morning. But whatever Jesus tells you to do, bottom line, we need to start obeying. You want our church to grow? We are the ones that got to give him something to work with. When Jesus had to turn the water into wine, he said, fill the pots. And then he did the work. So it's up to you and I. How many love the Lord this morning? Amen. Anybody need prayer this morning?